Hi, I'm John Paul Capanegro. Welcome to my DVD series, Revolution. Sometimes it takes more than two exposures to get the full range of tones there. Now it's time for HDR merges. Many people think that HDR and merges are synonymous when in fact they're only one technique amid a range of options that are possible for generating high dynamic range images. It's extremely powerful, it requires software post-processing, and that post-processing can often generate artifacts that some people like and some people dislike. How you treat the file is uh, a matter of taste and it pays to know how the software works. First, let's talk about how to expose for this because it requires having good exposures to start with. All good photographs require good exposures to start with. And let's talk about what you'll need to make the best HDR merges. So when exposing for HDR merges, we want to make at least three bracketed exposures. We're going to try and look for optimal shadow and highlight detail and we're going to get shots in between. I tend to favor one stop increments. People vary anywhere from half a stop to a stop and a half and I find that three quarters of a stop to a stop is generally pretty good. You're usually using finer increments to try and smooth out transitions in between. We're going to use this when the histogram is substantially clipped on both sides and in the most extreme lighting situations where we have very bright areas and very dark areas. There's several things we want to watch for. We want to bracket shutter speed instead of aperture. If we change the aperture, depth of field may change. And so we want to change exposure by varying shutter speed. We want to avoid motion and rotation whenever we're hand holding. Yes, you can hand hold. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But whenever you can use a tripod, if it's practical, by all means do. That's going to eliminate a majority of artifacts that you may run into. It's just a good safety valve. Caution. When you've got subjects that are moving, particularly subjects that are moving fast, the change in position may cause ghosting. Some of these artifacts can be retouched. In many cases, they can't. So HDR merges are really best for still subjects. You may actually come up with some very interesting effects in certain moving objects like uh, fast moving clouds or water. It's a very different uh, way of treating motion blur. But if things are substantially moving, expect some ghosting, some strange artifacts. When you're exposing for HDR handheld, there's several things that you want to keep in mind. You want to shoot in bracketed burst mode. Many cameras will shoot at least three exposures in sequence. One of the key things you want to watch for though is when you get into that bracketed burst mode, if you're then going to make subsequent exposures that are not HDR, remember to go back and change the setting on the camera. I get bit by that all the time. I forget and then I start making strange exposures afterwards. Might miss a shot based on that. So make it a habit to move in and out of this bracketed burst mode. Three to five shots. If you've got a very extreme situation, you want more shots. So get at least three shots. And again, half to a stop and a half apart, I prefer about a stop. It's generally a good set. It's pretty aggressive bracketing. Keep aperture consistent. And remember that automatic alignment can really work wonders and that's the key to having this whole handheld exposure experience work. One of the things you do want to watch for though, if there's any rotation or slight shift, it may cause slight distortion in layers as they're automatically aligned and you're going to have to crop the edges just a little bit. So frame just a little loose, just a little bit wide. However, whenever you can use a tripod, if you can just take the extra time, this will avoid all of those issues and ensure the fewest artifacts and the highest quality. First, frame the scene. Second, lock down the camera. I mean on the tripod, make sure everything's really stable and when you're handling the camera, try and avoid motion. In this case, you may want to consider mirror lockup. Next, set the camera to manual exposure. Find the exposure with no highlight clipping, get good generous highlights, and then just start stopping up so that you make lighter exposures, again in one stop increments, until when you stop exposing, the shadow should hit almost hit the midpoint of the histogram. And I'd go just a little further than you expect. The middle point of the histogram is just fine because you want a few extra exposures rather than having not enough exposures. So, in this case, we've got a dark exposure with uh, very good highlight detail and successively lightening up to finally we have a light exposure and that contains 
uh, very good shadow detail. And we look at these, here are five ex exposures, and we can see the histogram that goes along with them as well. And you see as it bracket up, we're basically just moving that exposure up. So, comparing these, you'll see that we have a full range of exposures with very full highlights, very open shadows, and these will then all be merged into a single file that contains all of the data. We can go from something that's too light, but contains good shadow detail, to something that's too dark, but contains great highlight detail, merge them together, and produce the final effect, which has good detail throughout the entire tonal scale. That's what it's going to take. Three to five exposures, good stop apart, enough data so that you've got really great shadow detail, really great highlight detail, and some transitions in between so that you can have a good smooth gradation throughout the whole thing. It pays to know exactly how to expose, and it's actually gotten easier and easier as a result of a lot of software's automatic alignment feature. Don't think that doing HDR means you have to work on a tripod. When you're working fast, you just simply can't get it, or you're having a long hike and you just don't have a tripod. It's okay to do this through handheld. I use it all the time. And again, remember the habit of moving into that bracket exposure and then moving out because you don't want your non-HDR images to be exposed in that bracket mode. You may miss the exposure on a perfectly good image. It's just develop the habit. I recommend you do it 10, 20, 30 times. Maybe even just go out on a practice session. Do it, do it, do it, do it again. And it'll become a useful habit that will allow you to make exposures you never expected to be able to make before. I find myself shooting in situations I simply never imagined that I can make photographs in today. And that's what's wonderful about these techniques.